Number 41. A rock with a mass of 540 grams in air is found to have an apparent mass of 342 grams when submerged in water. Letter A. What mass of water is displaced? All right. So first of all, check out number 40. All right. Question number 40 that I, I've done. Uh, I did a or made a detailed discussion of how we arrive at these formulas. So I'm just going to take the formulas from here, uh, or I should say from number 40, and uh, use them here. All right. If you want to know where they came from, which I highly recommend, uh, please check out that video. Also, number 36 is a good one to check out as well. So uh, we have a simple formula here that says that the mass of the water displaced should be equal to the mass of the object in air subtracted by the apparent mass of the object in water. Okay, so now all we need to do is just plug in the numbers, all right? You might say, well, where does this equation come from? Remember, check out number 40. So mass uh, in air was 540 grams. The uh, apparent mass is 342. So the mass of the water then that was displaced is simply 540 minus 342, which is equal to 198 uh, grams, okay? So that sounds good. That's letter A. Letter B now is asking us to, uh, what is the volume of the rock, right? So what is the volume of the rock? Now remember, since it says it's fully submerged, since the, you know, if we had to draw like a little picture, here's your thing, the rock is inside and it's fully submerged inside of the water here. Since the rock is fully submerged, we can state this truism that the volume of the water displaced is equal to the volume of the rock. Okay, that has to be true since it is fully submerged. Also talked about that in detail in number 40. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this formula over here that says that the density of water is equal to the mass of the water divided by the volume of the water. Why am I doing this for water when they're asking me for the volume of the rock? Well, the reason is, is because I know the density of water. That's like a known constant, right? That might be something you're going to have to memorize. And also, we do know the mass of the water that was displaced. So therefore, I'm using the density formula for water. But the reason why this is important is because now we realize that the volume of water is equal to the volume of the rock. So what I can do is simply substitute the volume of the rock into the formula over here. So we have now the density of the water will be equal to the mass of the water divided by the volume of the rock. Just doing some algebra, the volume of the rock will be equal to the mass of the water divided by, that's a weird W, the mass of the water divided by the density of the water, okay? Now just be careful about what units you're having or what units you are using. Here, uh, we're gonna, I'll just use the mass in grams, which is fine, 198 grams, that's the mass of the water. Divided by the density of the water, make sure you use the value of uh, the density of water in grams per cubic centimeter or per milliliter or whatever, per whatever, but make sure you're talking about grams. So the value here is one, right? Uh, that should be one that you memorize. I'll write it over here on the left-hand side. The density of water is equal to one gram per cubic centimeter or per milliliter. It's the same thing. Uh, so what we realize here is it's the same as the mass of the water, right? The volume of the rock. So uh, because the density of the water is one. So the answer here for the volume of the rock is going to be 198 cubic centimeters. It depends on whatever volume measurement you were using for your density down here, all right? So these answers, you know, this is an answer, whether you need it in cubic meters or cubic centimeters or milliliters, right? That doesn't state, so uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, okay. Anyway, uh, and then what? what's the last question? And then it says letter C, what is its average density? So uh, let's choose a different color. So letter C, what is its, what is uh, what is its? What are they talking about? They're talking about the rock. So I'm going to use this formula. Okay, the density of the rock will equal the mass of the rock divided by the volume of the rock. So what mass are we going to use? Are we using the apparent mass of the rock? Are we using the, the mass of the rock in air? Well, this is this is the true mass, okay, of, of the rock. It, that's going to be the value we're going to use, okay? So when we calculate this, we have the density of the rock being equal to the mass of the rock in air, so that's 540, divided then by um, the volume of the rock, which we just found to be 198 cubic centimeters, so you can put that over 198. 
You can now do your division. Just be careful about what units you write down. So this is 540 divided by 198. And we get 2.73 about, right? If we consider rounding. So 2.73, that is in terms of grams, in terms of grams per cubic centimeter, because those are the units of the mass and uh, volume I used. So this is therefore the density. Again, you might have different, um, you might have different units, uh, but it, it should be that answer. And then um, last but not least, is, is this consistent with the value for granite? Um, if I were a geologist, I would know this, but uh, you know, I, it, 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 you can look that up online. I'm, I'm, it, I'm sure they're giving us a value though that is close to it. I doubt they're trying to mess with us here. So I would say, uh, yes, it is. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in. Hope this helped. Please remember, subscribe. Please check out those, those other problems too, number 36, number 40. They will help you in the long run. Thank you.